What up? What up? What up? Podcast party people. I'm doing good. You're doing good. And I'm about to make the next two hours of your life even better. That's right. That's right. I got a very cool podcast. I have got the one and only Roy Big Country Nelson here on No Fucking Regrets today. MMA fighter, beat Kimbo Slice. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. That's right. Dude with the big mullet and the big beard. When I saw that motherfucker, I was like, that's my dude right there. There we go. All these clean cut MMA dudes. I was like, yeah, let's get that big motherfucker with the mullet. It's good shit right there. So I tell you what, I uh, it was a great conversation, man. I really enjoyed myself talking to Roy. He uh, he and I have been. Let's see. When did I? I mean, I got turned my. He came on my radar with the Kimbo fight. I mean, I think you know. He had a lot of fans back then, but everybody was just kind of like, holy shit, that dude beat Kimbo. And uh, and then my friend Brian Rancreat reintroduced me to him, and I started following Roy on Instagram. And to my surprise, he followed me back. I was like, oh, shit. Like, so we started following each other and uh, not really talking to each other, not really commenting on anybody on our posts, but, you know, like, you know, like I actually, I did comment on his one post, the one post where he climbs into the ice bath to take down the inflammation. I was like, "Oh my god, that's fucking brutal." I don't want to do that, but uh, you know, so I reached out to him a little bit ago, and we we're just kind of talking back and forth. And I was like, "Hey, you know, if you got some time, man, I'd love to have you on the podcast." And he was like, "Fuck yeah!" So I was stoked, man. Very cool. He, uh, we kind of had a shared, uh, you know, I, I, he took jujitsu and I took jujitsu when I was younger and I loved it, man. I really, really loved what it did for me. It really kind of brought me out of my shell. My sensei, Wally J just was such a positive, inspiring, uh, person for me really brought just gave me confidence. And, you know, he used to say, he always used to say to me, you strong, strong, like bull. And I, I remember that, like it really resonated with me. So to have, uh, to have this kind of connection through that a little bit was, was pretty awesome. I, uh, before we get into that though, I want to talk to you about this week's sponsor. Uh, this no fucker and regrets is presented to you by nuclear blast as well as gas digital. And this week's sponsor is the Ridge wallet. The Ridge Wallet. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna talk about it here for everybody listening on audio, and I'm gonna show it to the people. Check that out. Money clip on the back. You got this. It holds 12 cards. It's got a little groove for you to push your cards out, and then you can just kind of fan them out. That's right. It. Uh, I'm telling you right now. I just switched over, and as first, I was kind of like, "Do I really need a new wallet?" Like, do I, when, is there any reason for me to have, and you know what? I like it. Uh, it is light, sleek, and industrial. Doesn't fold or bulge awkwardly in your back pocket. And it's kind of changed my whole pocket situation. Um, most people are still using wallets designed in the 90s, the ones that flop open. And that's what I had had just until right before this. And it was full of, old receipts and gift cards and dude shit i went through there and i was like what the fuck do i got all this shit in here for i've got so much shit in here this is ridiculous and uh it was a mess and this kind of cleaned it up it's like a nice little compact thing it holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash comes in 30 colors and styles including carbon fiber and burnt titanium uh, i love it but don't take my word for it listen to the thirty thousand. Five star reviews. Thirty thousand five star motherfuckers love the Ridge Wallet. I, I'm telling you, came with a little case. It's got a little extra screwdriver, some extra screws in case anything falls out. Uh, 
These durable materials mean each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You could buy this one wallet and have that one wallet for the rest of your life. A lifetime guarantee. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll love it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't like it. And they'll give you your money back. That's right. That's right. And I tell you what, because you're hearing about the Ridge wallet on No Fucking Regrets, if you head over to ridge.com forward slash discount and enter the code NFR for No Fucking Regrets, you'll get 10% off this bad boy. So that's right. Head over to ridge.com discount forward slash discount, enter the code NFR, get 10% off of the Ridge wallet. I'm going to get into this right now, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only big country, Mr. Roy Nelson. Roy Nelson, big country on the No Fucking Regrets podcast, man. I'm stoked, dude. I, I, you know what? I'm actually pretty stoked, too. I, uh, I was wondering, Led Zeppelin the rock band Led Zeppelin was famous for rock and roll debauchery. I mean, probably set the precedent for all rock and roll debauchery that would come after it. You know, everything from, you know, especially John Bonham, you know, Bonzo was famous for trashing hotel rooms and throwing TV sets out hotel, you know, into the pool and piles of cocaine while taking a fish and sticking it up a groupie's coochie. What is Roy Nelson's most Led Zeppelin rock and roll moment? Uh, you know what? Because, it... oh man, there, there is no Led Zeppelin uh, moment just because of how the contracts are written. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so it, you're, you're like uh no that's going on my that's a my tab versus like like a traditional where it's like oh that's somebody else's or that's going to be on the managers or no this is all the, the the how the ufc and like bellator and like all the um the um pimps out there they have it set up where no no we're, you're gonna you're gonna pay the whole time so you're like uh so there's not there's no there's no Led Zeppelin no no uh, throwing TVs out the window no no doing that you're like okay what can I do for you sir <laughs> man that's too bad are they are did they forbid you from doing that kind of behavior I mean it seems like it could be a pretty you know rough and rowdy you know group of guys I, no you know what it what it is is it. What, how it tends to be is it's your like your your entourage or your corner in are the ones that really screw you because they're the <laughs> ones that are doing the like they're in the other room doing like order stuff from the bar to put the holes in the wall or whatever and then and then you get the bill and you're going well who had this who ordered this and <laughs> who put the whole hole in the wall and you're and it's you're the one that's paying the bill so it, it's a big difference so you, you, you got to keep your eye on you know what's uh, who's doing what. Right. <laughs> right. Do you, at one point, were you rolling with a big entourage? You know what? I've, I've, I've always, um, you know, I've, I've, I had the champagne dreams of living on a beer budget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're drinking Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I like it, man. I like it. I, uh, I tell you what, you're a hard man to research. I, I got to say, you were such a hard man to research. There's not a lot of, there's a lot of little short clips of you just living on the internet. It's all just like little sound bites and quick little like one, two minute interviews and stuff. And, uh, and in some ways that was, it was uh, cool for me to, to do that because, you know, podcasts are more like a deep dive into somebody's life and you've got a lot of, you know, little nuggets of information out there. There's a lot of highlight clips, a lot of, you know, bits from the TV show and stuff like that. But, um, but it was, but it was interesting in the sense that, uh, that as I was doing it, you know, I mean, obviously the first thing that pops up, the top of your Google ranking is the Kimbo fight. You know, I mean, that's, right. you know, just like, it was such a jaw dropping. I mean, I'm, that was when you first came on my radar. I was like, what? Somebody fucking took down Kim. I was like, holy shit. Who's this motherfucker? You know, like it was, uh, and, and. And leading up to that, you know, I think it was really interesting that at one point 
you were like, you know, this up and comer on the show. And then you come back and now you're kind of like the star coach a couple of seasons later or whatever. And I was wondering how that what was the way that they treated you from when you were up and coming as a fighter to now you're a coach on the on the later episodes. <clears throat> was it different? Actually, it was probably worse being a coach than a contestant. Okay. Like, by, like by far. like Because I, I, I think I've done, with the UFC, I did uh, three reality TV shows. I did one in Japan. I did uh, the, the one here in um, the U.S. where I was a coach. I was coached twice, one in Japan and one here in the States, and then I was a contestant. And the contestant was the easiest one because the goal was simple. It's easy. All you have to do is win. and at the end, you're just like, all I gotta do is fight. Like, yeah. And then the other one, you're trying to hurl or, you know, basically herd cats and teach them <laughs> how to fight. And like, and then you kind of give them like, um, I wish, like, basically what I wish when I was a contestant, I wish the coaches would have actually um, treated me more, more, you know, kind of give me more real life information if that makes any sense, you know, like where you kind of like, it's an actual learning uh, thing versus going, Oh, well, I'm on a TV show. Cause like on a TV show where I would, I'd actually literally tell guys that um, it's, it's where you're pretty much doing a game show. All you have to do is win and you're going to get a prize. Like that's right. it's really that simple. Like, and everybody's like, well, no, you got to get a knockout. You got to do, you know, you got to win a certain way. And I'm like, that's how you keep your job. But if you right. want to win the show, all you have to do is win. And it could be the ugliest. It doesn't matter. They can't like, they can't screw you out of winning. You know, if you just go out there and just like sit on a guy and you sit and mount the whole time for, you know, the 10 minutes that you have to do it and you sit and mount and you automatically lose, then you're like, ah, oh, the game's rigged. And then yeah, you can right. go, well, it's something you know something's not right but it's supposed to be done with the, you know on the commission and blah 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 but um i mean i remember having guys go well why did you pair me up with that guy or why did you you know like they were crying over stuff and i'm like if you're supposed to win the thing it doesn't matter who you're supposed to be matched up with you're, right you're supposed to be like when i was a contestant like i already knew i was gonna win the thing and everybody's like well how'd you know and i'm like well because no no fighter is stupid enough to do the ultimate fighter show and take a pay cut. Like I took like a big, massive pay cut. I went, I went from six figures to, to be a, a thousand air to do ultimate, actually fight for free on the ultimate fight. So, Oh shit. Wow. So when you're fighting on when you're going from six figures to fighting for free, like you're like, who's going to, you know, do that in like the, the realm of heavyweights. And I'm like, there's not going to be anyone. And then Later, come find out, um, like when Kimbo got in there, Kimbo wasn't fighting for free. Like it was, it was just like you're just kind of like, wow, like this is this the old TV thing is a whole you know rig in itself, you know, like. Well, where, so many people were there for. I mean, so many people tuned into that fight because of Kimbo. That was like internet sensation. You know, like it was crazy. Yeah, no, like I, the first time I I knew of Kimbo was actually I fought uh, in Bodog in Costa Rica on a beach is like the first real fight Island, uh, okay. on a beach. Uh, and it was the first time like you, 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 you paid the internet by the minute, kind of like AOL stuff, you know, the old AOL okay. stuff, <laughs> right. Right. you're in Costa Rica and you're paying, uh, you paid $15 and you got like, you know, free, like 180 minutes or whatever. But, um, one of my friends is brought over and he goes, Oh, look at this guy. Um, and it was Kimbo fighting, um, some bum in, uh, Miami you know, a street brawl. And they're like, Oh, look at it. I'm like, uh, he does not, you know, like I was just like, and then I think that fight happened three years later, four years later, where I yeah. ended up fighting Kimbo. It was, it was, it was crazy. But that was like the number, that was the number one TV show for Viacom spike, uh, in its history. So I'm, I, I like, did, to you, did, you to did you request to fight with him or were you just the only other heavyweight there? No. Did you say um, you want, I want to fight Kimbo? No, I was the only one that actually said I didn't want to fight Kimbo. Everybody else wanted to fight Kimbo because they wanted to make a name. Oh, you I said you had didn't it. want to fight him. No, the, the reason why I didn't want to fight him is because in the house, I said, you know how we were fighting for free. I didn't want to fight him for free. I'd rather oh, fight right. him for I'd rather fight him for some money. 
Like that's yeah. the whole reason why I fight is to get paid. The only, <laughs> right. the only reason why I did the Ultimate Fighter show was for PR and right. to um, to have because back in back in the day the UFC never fired Ultimate Fighter uh, champions. Like that was their that kind of like that was like how you kind of secured your job. You know, oh, they, never gotcha. fired, okay. they, they never fired anybody. So I was like, well. If I go this route, then I already know that I'm going to have at least six to nine fight career with the yeah. UFC. You know, so like that was my thinking. But as soon as I won it, then they ended up firing their first guy. And I was like, why did I even do this? Right. I lost money. <laughs> did you, uh, so had you prior to that, you know, at least with the, on the reality show. So I'm sure there must have been some setup to it, but did you fight him prior to that? Or was it just, that was the first time you ever stepped in the ring with Kimbo? The, the first, that was the first time I ever ste stepped in the ring. First time I ever sparred with him. The first time I ever, like, I mean, we were, the thing is, is like the TV show would have been so much better if they would have, um, if everybody would have known that we were actually roommates. Oh yeah. shit! In the on the TV show, so wow. we were like, I I I slept over here. He slept on this side of the room, and we were and we were roommates the whole time. So wow! Like, so uh, you guys were not were you were you friend you were friends? Yeah, no, kinda, we were we were friends, yeah. but we we yeah. kind of we we didn't really talk to each other because he was on the other team and I was on the other team. Right, and, right. And then it's but as soon as we fought, then we became really good friends afterwards, just huh. because he he told me he would um, basically. Um, talk to me about and treat and tell me about the porn business, and I tell him about the fight business. You tell you about the porn business? Is that you said? Yeah, because because it, like he was all he was all like you know the bank bros and all the uh, he was, was like he, he he was in the porn business hardcore. Like nice. he was, you okay. Know, so and then me, he would tell me all about the the porn business, like how they make their money and how like the whole thing with that, and then I would tell him about the fight business, and then. That's how we kind of compared notes because we were all we were just bonding over business ideas. <laughs> he never invited you to the porn business. He never brought you into. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, is are you married at this point when you're when when all this is going on? Yeah, no. Uh, I actually when I was in the Ultimate Fighter house, I lived three miles away from the actual house. So like I'm okay. like, dude, I, let me just go to my house. Like, well, everybody, because when you're in that house, that you have no internet. You can't talk to your friends, no phone, no no TV, no, like it is designed to make you go cuckoo. Right. Where, but it's designed like, to make you have probably make drama probably. Yes. Right? It's just, uh, and then they'll throw in like little tidbits where a producer, like, um, there's a TV show it's called like unreal. I think it's like on Hulu and it reminded me of literally the, um, how the ultimate fighter TV show is. Like how they like set things up. Like you, I could be yelling at uh, somebody over here about, you know, like, Hey, why did you do this? Cussing them out the whole nine yards. And then they use a different guy's face and then kind of go, well, look what he's yelling at that guy. And it's like, that's oh, not even what happened. Wow. You're, like, so, you're like, that's not what happened. So like a lot of fancy really reality, like a bunch of fancy editing, getting yeah, the just, story just across. Like, how, like, like scenes are just like, you're like, like uh, the one thing I learned about um, reality TV shows, like, can you do that again? And you're like, huh? That's not reality. Right, right. That's they didn't get the they didn't get the scene good enough or whatever. Yeah, they're like, uh, can you do that again? Uh, a little, this time a little bit with a little more spank, you know, a little right. spank. <laughs> you're like, was what? was was Kimbo bringing porn stars to the to the house? No, the the what that that was the whole thing was like when you kind of learned a whole different. Uh, vibe was uh, when we fought on Ultimate um, Ultimate Fighter. He, uh, there was because there was like no, you weren't allowed to bring like nobody knew you were fighting. Nobody like it was right. all hush hush the whole nine yards, okay. and then all of a sudden, uh, he had friends there when he was fighting. His manager there, like like all these people that you're like, I wasn't allowed to bring nobody. What, what's going on? Right. <laughs> so, but you know. It is what it is, but you know, but it, I'm I'm thankful that I you know I met Kimbo, and because there's a lot of a lot of people that came from uh, Kimbo that uh, that I'm still still have in my life from knowing him. That's rad. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, you were you when you went into the ring with him. Yeah, I, I mean, 
I'm not a professional, I'm, I'm not an MMA dude, but I would have been shitting getting into the ring. Was there any, you know, in the back of your head or were you, were you just like, I got, like, I can take this dude? Oh, yeah, no, because we we were talking about fighting and doing MMA. And like, I, like, as soon as I stepped into the, the house, I already knew I was going to win. And then as soon as I sized everybody up, because the, like, I literally, I think, before I even went to the ultimate fighter, I, I just fought uh, the number two guy in the world. So I wasn't okay. worried about like, there, like the only guy that was going to beat me was the number one guy in the world. And he was, and that was Fedor and he wasn't coming over there. Yeah. For he free. wasn't coming to do a reality show. <laughs> for free. He wasn't going to do that. No, no, no. So Let's I already knew what my standards what... were. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's uh, let's go back to uh, the beginning. Let's go back to you grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, I, you know I've I've been to Vegas a bunch of times. I'm I've never been like Vegas is always a weird city to me. Like it's such a transitory city. Like I never end up talking to anybody from Las Vegas every time I'm there. Like I talk to dudes from Boston, or I'm talking to dudes you know wherever. It's such a transitory city. You know, like I'm I would imagine growing up there. You know, you must have had some kind of sense of that maybe as a kid or whatever, but, you know, it is, you know, you're right there. I don't know how close you are to the strip or whatever. Like, what was that like? Tell me about this time. I think, uh, I think the probably the best way I can describe Vegas that when I was growing up would be like small town vibe. But then if you'd go to the strip, there'd be a million people. You know what I mean? So like small, yeah. like literally, I think there might've been like 300,000 people and then a million people always on the strip. Yeah, and then like so, it was always like when someone came into town, then you'd go to the strip or whatever. Right. But now, I mean, even as a even as a kid though, like you were doing that. I mean, you probably just had a pretty normal. No, as soon as you were uh, sixteen, you would go to the strip and you go, "I'm gonna go cruise the strip." Yes, and literally, you'd go and up and down the, the cars. Strip. Yeah, you literally go up and down the strip for like literally back then it was. Circus Circus to Stardust. So literally maybe a block. Yeah. <laughs> like where the McDonald's is right there with Circus Circus. Right. And then you just turn around. Now all you do is just cruise the strip. And that's how yeah. you'd like try to either find some locals or, or you'd find uh, some tourists, you know, that were 16 because you're still – because that was before they even had – like Caesars was still around, but Caesars was all the way at the other end of the strip where you'd go, that's on the other side of the world. I mean, they were like, there was no, but the strip pretty much was maybe two blocks. Yeah. Growing up, you know, like, and the, now it's, I mean, right now it's like, it was still, you know, could you, it was still open container though, right? You could just drink on the street. Yeah, it's still, and it's always still. At 16? Same. At 16? At 16, it was like, it, well, you had to be still 21, like, but. Oh, okay. The thing is, is at, when you're a kid, You'd go um, as soon as as soon as you turn sixteen, you go cruise the strip, and then you'd go gamble. Right. Like that was that like you're like oh I'm gonna go I'm gonna see you know slide by I'm gonna go put a couple quarters in the slot machine and then and then when you start getting ballsy enough or, or when you get a fake ID or whatever then you'd actually go to the actual casino and play at the table. Like when we as a kids it was like me and my friend. We'd always go to, um, it's like, it was called Silver City at the time. And we'd literally go there and we'd play a uh, roulette at the tables. Yes. And, 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 and you were, you were big then, right? Like you're, you're a big 16 no, year old. I, I was, yeah, I was probably, you know, I was like 185 pounds. You know, I was, you could, you could pass for 21. I, I don't know about passing, but the only time they cared was, uh, Anytime when you're winning, when you're losing, you can stay there all yeah. day long. But as soon as you start winning, you're right. like, let me see your ID. Right. Let me right. see your ID. You're like, motherfucker. And, and it always, because I, I, I remember uh, one of my friends, um, his friend, uh, like, lost, like, took like five grand from his parents, and then they went to the Hilton and gambled it all away. And then he had to go home and tell his dad that he stole, you know, basically stole like three or three to five grand from him. And then they, oh, wow. the, then the casino had to give it back because they're like, why did you card my kid? He's only right. he's literally 16. They're like, right. well, he lost the money, you know, like, <laughs> but if he would have won it, they would have been like, oh, I'm sorry, can I see your ID? You know what I mean? But it, it was yeah. crazy. 
Yeah. I mean, that must have been a fun time because I, I remember what, when I was growing up and I grew up, I had, when I was a teenager, I was here in California in this big suburb called Fremont, which is like in the South Bay of the Bay Area. And we had the cruising strip, you know, it was probably about a, a mile long and just like every Friday, every Saturday, just every teenager, 20 year old, would bet traffic jam on Fremont Boulevard and just yell at girls. And I, me and my friends, we just skate there. We didn't even have cars. So we just hang out at the Carl's Jr. and just yell at people. And I mean, it was it was nothing to do, but it was so fucking fun. You know, it was such a good time. That, that was just like a school movie. It was uh, it was literally a McDonald's and a Taco Bell. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah like, Taco Bell's you, on the other side. Yeah, you'd like you. That's where you would start is at McDonald's, and then you end at Taco Bell, and then all you do is you just cruise, and then you know if you're lucky, you're like oh, I got me a girl, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Totally. Totally. Did you skate? Did you ever skateboard? This is like I, you know, maybe I, I a skateboarded nighttime. when I was uh, a little bit younger. Um, I do you remember? Uh, like the old, um, I remember my very first uh, skateboard after, uh, actually one of my friends actually stole it, but it was a Pal Peralta. And that was like the the best like skateboard. I'm like, dude, this is so awesome. Yeah. You know how much the skateboard is? It's like $100. I had, Dude, I had a Pal Peralta too. I was like, oh my God, this is like the best. I got the best right now. Like, I did. I had the Pal Peralta. Those are good skateboards, man. I love those things. Yeah, That's no, I yeah and then um you must have been you must have been quite a sight though on a skateboard you know what i I was i was the i was the kid that would take like a rubber inner tube um thing so it would help you ollie you know you put it on the uh, skateboard in the middle and you'd like use it to jump right right like i mean i'd like i i was always you know i always went out there and i did did my thing i, I skateboarded Athletic. Bike, right? i was always yeah. yeah i was doing sports throughout my whole life were you uh what kind of music are you listening to at this time like when you're a teenager you know what like what kind of uh, bands are you into it was it, like rap one, are you into rap are you into metal is I, it i'm listening to every like a little bit of everything anything with a good um like uh rift you know what i mean or a good just good beat i that was i'd be like okay yeah i can i can get down to this you know it could be all the way from rap or it could i mean you could go all the way to like a boy George to like to like Snoop Dogg. I mean, like it was right. As long right. as it had a good beat, it, it didn't matter. And I think that's the one thing about music is it's you're very it there's not like a right thing or wrong thing. You know what I mean? Because like sometimes it's not even the lyrics that you, you're like, I don't even know what the lyrics are, but it's like this beat's awesome. You know, like you can let, yeah. like you know, like when you will work out, you would your mentality of working out music is different than like, you know, I just want to chill and just be mellow. You yeah. You I mean? want up tempo, up tempo shit for working out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or like fighting, like anything they kind of, you're like, you know, like, I mean, the classic would be, you know, I have a tiger besides that one, but like anything with a, like metal, you know, definitely, you know, where you're getting ready to mosh or something like that. Like I gotta go beat somebody. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, like what, what was your areas. what was your what was your I'm getting ready to go beat somebody song that you would the metal song that you would listen to? Uh, you know, Metallica, like, Slayer, you know, something you know like what? that. Like in like Metallica or even like ACDC, you know what I mean? Like just right, kind of right. just just kind of get out there, you know. And there's not like there's not one that like sticks out, but like but like ACDC for sure. Yeah. Did you ever, did you ever, were you going to a lot of sh shows at this point when you're a teenager? And you know what? I, the very first show, I never went to any concerts. The only first concert I ever went to was, uh, and we snuck in, it was a uh, boys to men. And then that, was, <laughs> and that was like, and that was like, I think I was maybe 16, 17. And That's the only reason why I went there is because someone snuck me in and then after that, the only um, and then my next one after that was uh, I think I was thirty-two. So I there's wow, that's a big jump, yeah. And it was like literally from sixteen, seventeen, boys to men. Thirty-two was uh, Garth Brooks when nice. he was uh, show, uh, on um, when he was at the win when he was doing literally solo. It was just him. Oh, okay. Oh, and like then, just like acoustic shows. Yeah, yeah, and then um, and then literally. 
after that, I went, um, my father-in-law takes me to all his uh, concerts. So like the last one we went to was uh, Chicago. And I was okay. like, oh, listen to Chicago, right? And then I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know any of these songs. Like, like so you're, literally- you've never been in a mo- you've never been in a mosh pit. I've never been in a mosh pit. I've never mean, been in a mosh pit. Holy shit. You would be a- I, I take that back. I've there, there I've been in mosh pits at house parties. Okay. <laughs> right. That would be that would be a fucking awesome sight to see right there. <laughs> you yeah, in a mosh that's pit. The only time I've ever been in a mosh pit is a house party. So like you went and saw your friend's band play in the backyard when you were younger and you got in the mosh pit. Yeah, that would that that'd be the only time that you've ever seen me actually mosh. Or like, like, you know, like, like, like you had, a, like you had a friend, like you had a friend who was in a punk band or a metal band or something like that at the time. Yeah, no, you, you, it, it was literally, it was, oh, it wasn't even my, it was, it was literally a house party that, um, where like for back in the day, it would be house parties where, um, pe- the, the whoever was doing the house party would either rent the house out, and they would, um, it basically be a kager. And then it was five dollars yeah. to get in, so you could drink all the beer you want at sixteen. Yeah. You know, like it was one of yes. those type of. And then there, Fuck and yeah. then literally, it would be the DJ, and he'd either oh, DJ, okay. either like it'd be all the way from R and B to moshing. Like they didn't care because they were literally just selling the booze. Right, right. Just whatever got the par- whatever got the party started. Yeah, right. You don't it care. Was, it was, it, <laughs> they're like. As long as we get some teenage kids um, drinking, we don't care. But it, <laughs> that was like the, I, I just remember because they, they were all, they were just cake parties. And then it would last probably about an hour and a half before the cops broke it up. Yeah. How was that? How was the Boys to Men show? I, I'm the, I'm a fan of Boys to Men. I love, you know, I'll make love to you like you. And I mean, they were fucking killing it back then. Like I loved Boys to Men. I, you know what? I, I couldn't Killer even tell voices. you. Like, I, I, I was more nervous that I was sneaking into this Boys and the Men concert, so I didn't even pay attention. I was like, okay, they, are we cool? We cool? You know, like, <laughs> that's all. I, I didn't even, it wasn't even like to go there to listen to music. It was the fact that it was like, hey, you want to go to your first concert? Cool. And then you go in there and you're like, okay, they're going to kick me out. Are we, are we good? We, we, we good? What, what's, are all the are all the black people at the show just like, look at this big white boy here. What's he doing here? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck is this dude doing? No, because back then it was because like, you know how it always is. Is it's like if you go to a like a like the first like Snoop Dogg uh, where it actually made it to the mainstream, and you're like, right. there's nothing but white people in here. Right, right, <laughs> right. Okay. You know, That's so it wasn't, it wasn't like it wasn't like you're in uh south, you know, in South LA doing a concert. It's like no, we're at MGM Grand. <laughs> Yeah, in Las Vegas, right, on the Strip, right? Yeah. They're like, no, I, uh, I, I, I was, I was. Somebody would ask you. I was listening to some interview, and one of the, que- it was like fan questions, and it was something about like, what was the hardest hit you ever took from somebody? And you said, "Does my dad count?" <laughs> it, no, it's true. Like, like, because you're like, those are the ones you remember. The, yeah, you know, right. in, a, in, a, in a fight, you're like, yeah, that hurt, but like at. Usually in a fight, you're like, well, that hurt. But then you're like, well, I bet you I hit harder. You know, you have big brother syndrome. You're like, the only, the only time fighting doesn't work for you is when you, when it's like um, where you get hit and you're like, I don't know if I can hit him that hard. Then that's when you start thinking about like, maybe I chose the wrong fight. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my dad never, my dad never hit me, but the belt came out a lot. I used to go have to, we had a cherry tree in the backyard and I have to go take a, a branch off the cherry tree, which I don't know if you know anything about, like they call it a switch uh-huh, and the switch, cherry yeah. tree branches I, are I, like, I, I might rubber. Not be that they, right. <laughs> <laughs> but they just, those cherry tree branches just bend and they've got, so, so when they fucking hit, oh my God, there's just, it's, it just, there's no, fl- I mean, it's all flex. So it never breaks or anything. What, what, did you ever have anything like that? Like, I'm trying to think like your mindset, like why you got into being a fighter. Like, you know, sometimes, oh, you, you know, you, sometimes there's, you know, rough, yeah, no, you know, the, you had a rough. No, father. the reason why I got into fighting was, um, it was actually crazy. The I got I've been doing martial arts, you know, ever since like Karate Kid or you know like right. 1984, right. Right? like American Ninja. Like I wanted to Fuck be yeah. a ninja. Um, but when I was in uh, high school, I was like, how do I get paid doing martial arts? 
And the only way that I knew how to get paid to do martial arts was doing like fancy kicks. So like Kung Fu and doing um, movies. Cause my um, Kung Fu teacher at the time, like a couple of his, uh, like his, one of his school brothers was David Carradine. So, you know, oh, he shit. made yeah, it. From Kung you know, Fu. Like, and then, and then uh, his, his teacher, um, uh, professor Kim uh, was the guy that was in like the drag, you know, the, the guy that was supposed to beat up fight Bruce Lee. You know when he broke his back. You know that. Oh, Enter the like, dragon. He, he was actually the enforcer. He was supposed to fight uh, Bruce Lee for that. Like so, there was like all these cool connection ties, like from this kung fu. Um, and I was like, dude, I, I want to be. I want to do that. And like, and then I found out I was to like try to do movies. So I was practicing fighting just for movies, and be like a stuntman oh, or something okay. like that. Oh, and all right. That, that that was like how I was gonna get into fighting, and. But I wasn't even trying to like be a fighter. I was trying to just do martial arts and get paid for it. Right. And then, right. Um, and then I think as I was seventeen, and that's right when Tough Enough came out. Remember the old like twenty ounce gloves, and then the guys would beat the yep. shit out of each other for like two minutes or whatever it was. Yeah. Um. Oh. Sorry. So then. Um, Margaret or <sighs> Sorry. All good. No, um, but then um, Tough Enough came out, and then uh, UFC came out right at that time, 1993. What and, what, are you, what belt are you at this point? If you, you're uh, taking Kung Fu, you're doing Kung Jiu-Jitsu? Fu, or? I was, no, I, did, I didn't even know what Jiu-Jitsu was. Uh, Kung Fu, I was a blue sash, and then later I became a black sash, and then like... Um, but at, the, at this particular time, you're up to a... Like a yeah, just like a blue, halfway. Blue. Not, is that like halfway? No, because I didn't really care about sashes. Because like belts, I, I I liked my uh, teacher at the time. Belts are just to hold up your pants. Okay. Like you know what I mean? Like it, 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 was, it was more. It's a, I like that. So there was no, I I it wasn't the the guy going oh I got to get a black belt I got to get you know this I wasn't because my whole thing was is just be really good at doing um, martial arts to get paid to do it in movies. That was like yeah. my whole thing. And then, then tough enough came, um, uh, the boxing and then the UFC came and I was like, Oh, I'll, I'll try that. And then I first tried to do the tough enough or whatever it was at 17. And I found out that you had to be 18. You couldn't do it at 17. And then I was like, okay, that's not going to work. And then I didn't think of anything of it. And then I started, um, then went to school. And then twenty twenty. When you're when you're when you're taking the kung fu, are you do you? you know, I took uh, when I was a little younger than that, but from the time I was in like fourth grade to like seventh grade, I went to my I had a sensei named Wally J, and I took jujitsu and judo, and I loved it. I mean, this was I was a pretty introverted kid, and he really brought me out of my shell. I was you know I wanted to be Bruce Lee. I wanted to, you know make movies and all that stuff too. And, uh, and that's what I think is awesome that you just said what you said. Cause I was like, Oh my God, that's totally like, I could have done that. And I could have, my family ended up uh, moving, but for a long time, Wally J was, you know, he was really, a really amazing mentor, like just such a positive dude and such, you know, I would get there half an hour early and start warming up. I would stay 45 minutes after the class and just spar with him. And he was, you know, it was such a, for me, it really brought me out of my shell and just completely inspired me. Like the dude, I would honestly say the dude changed my life path that yeah, I was no, on. That's one thing about like martial arts is like when you like learn like the history of it and then just the people are usually like really down to earth, you know what I mean? And then, but the more I, uh, I was, I stayed around, around it, then I learned that um, it became more of a cult. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> oh wow. You know, okay. Like, the, like, you know, like there's guys that are, um, I don't want to say cult. Uh, there's people that but are your, little, your your teacher at this point became yeah, kind of so, like a cult. So, so, so there's people that are definitely like lost and need a you know need a place. And then right. I'm like I'm like oh I'm, this is getting a little weird for me. So then that's when I found jiu-jitsu and kind of broke off. And then uh, and then I found I was really good at jiu-jitsu and jiu-jitsu was like a whole nother thing. And then I was a coach for doing that. And then uh, I got this is what, this was the, the Gracies with Renzo Gracie. Uh, no, it was, uh, it was actually John Lewis in Vegas. And then I started, um, like coaching, uh, like Chuck Liddell, uh, 
uh, working out with you like started coaching. Men. You were coaching Chuck Liddell. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, and then shit. like back in the day, then working with Tito Ortiz. Like it was basically this whole like I mean it was the MMA world. So like if you're like where'd you start? I'd be like, well, you know where MMA started? I started with those guys. You know, like where, like the whole history. Like I knew Dana before he was even part of the UFC. The Fortitas before they like back when Lorenzo actually hated the uh, MMA. He was a boxing guy until huh. until, he, until he owned it, and then he's like, "No, this MMA stuff's awesome." <laughs> <laughs> just pivoted just like that on a dime. Exactly. Well, we'll get like uh, John Lewis is the first guy to get licensed in uh, Nevada for um, like a promoter's license, and mm -hmm. and that was back when uh, Lorenzo was uh, still on the commission. You know, for the okay. boxing. You know what I mean? Like, like, how does that happen? Like, that's when you start learning about politics and how things work in the real world. When you're like 20, you're like, hmm, is that really how that works? Right, right. So, um, I mean, that must, have been, that must have been a pretty exciting time, though. I mean, like, how amazing to be just in, like, at the kind of at the beginning of a movement, really. You know what? The best time I had was when I was, I found out I was really good at jiu-jitsu, and then I got paid to do what I love. And I was doing jujitsu and I got to travel the world. I, like, I mean, the first time I ever went out of, um, out of the country was to Brazil, you know, just to do a jujitsu tournament. And then mm -hmm. from there I went to Guam, you know, like it's just like literally traveling the world as, you know, when you're a young buck at 21 and you're like, hey, this is pretty cool. And it's, you're not doing it on somebody else. You're not, you're not doing it on like your parents dying. You know what I mean? Right. It's, yeah. It's, you're like, I did this. While your parents, yeah. you know, like I remember my dad and my uh, stepmom would be like, "Well, you need to go get your education. You need to do this. You need to do this." And I'm like, "To go work for somebody? Like it just didn't make any sense." Yeah, <laughs> right. And at 21, and you're traveling, you know, internationally. That's pretty incredible, right? Like, yeah, no, especially when you're like, I, you, I don't like what, what type of audience? What type of audience are you playing to in Brazil at 21? Like on your first thing? Like, is there? a hundred people like thousands no, of people no the, uh that one is probably like for jiu-jitsu it was thousands it's probably like three to five thousand people wow that's awesome that's sick so and you're and but i remember just like literally traveling the country after i got back from doing that like going to like texas like uh north carolina and i'd literally like look for where tournaments are and that where the prize money was and i would just like like okay it's going to be $2,000 for a prize money. And I'm like, okay, the flight's going to cost me $1,000 and I have to win to make a thousand. Okay. Second place is 500. So I'll be in the whole 500. I got to win. So then I'd <laughs> yeah, book, right. you know, then I'd book the flight and then I'd go to Texas and you know, whatever. And then I'd make my, you know, 600 bucks for the weekend and then go uh, the very next week and go to like somewhere like North Carolina and just literally travel the country looking for tournaments to make my money. Wow. And fight just fighting every week. No, that was just doing jiu-jitsu. Oh, okay, just doing jiu-jitsu. All right. That was, that was, was I didn't even know. I didn't even want to fight. Like the only the only time I actually started fighting was I was I. Uh, well, stay, wait, stay, 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 stay with jiu-jitsu for a second. Just I'm curious. Like, so you're doing this once a week. Are you are you single at yeah. this point? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're so, not married. No, definitely, de yeah. definitely single. Like, like because yeah. you can't like literally, and then um, literally just train. You know, Monday through Friday. Jump on a plane on Friday, do a tournament on Saturday, home on Sunday, and then and you're just slaying, slaying MMA groupie pussy, just left and right. <laughs> that, that, that's if you want to do that. I, I, my focus is just straight jiu jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but you're, but I, th I mean, that's pretty crazy to me that you're doing like you're doing these tournaments once a week and getting paid for them. That's a, that's that's a pretty heavy schedule, you know, for a fight or you know. I don't know if it's fighting, but whatever you want to no, call it. Because it would be like going to practice. It's like literally like, you know, how you go to the studio and you're like, okay, I'm getting paid to do this. Yeah. Versus where you're like, no, I got to still sell the stuff. It's not, yeah. you're, you're like, no, I'm just literally it would, the only time it, it would, if you took less than first, first place, took like second or third place, then you're like, oh, I'm out that money. Cause you had to pay yeah. for Cause like you had to pay for your own. Cause you're basically investing in yourself to go make these, uh, uh, the tournaments and then where you'd actually like even do a scouting and you like find out like, okay, at the time was like Jeff Munson. Uh, he, was, he fought in the UFC, but um, 
he was a good grappler and he would do the same thing. And all you do is just look and see where he would, you'd be like, okay, he's in the Florida. So he's not going to be in my tournament bracket up here in, um, you know, Washington or something, you know, right. uh, separate. So you're like, the only guy that's going to give me a, you know, pain in the ass is, is a guy that I actually know, not some local, you know, guy in, you know, Texas. He's not going to be, right. like he has a name. And that yeah. was kind of where you would actually like guys would actually kind of Corey, Corey grab like, okay, I'm going to go this tournament and win it. And then you go to that. Oh, one. okay. Okay. So we never huh. cross because if we make sure we cross, then, then you're going to be out some money and I'm going to be out some money because I got to pay to get up here. And there's only, you know, $1,000 here or something like that. Yeah. What, what, so what, how big are these crowds? How, how big are the tournaments at these crowds? Uh, is this like playing, probably, is this like playing a small club for a band? You know, like. I sort of, but it, I'd say cause it, cause they were like, um, did you ever go to like a, what, like a sports uh, karate tournament? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I competed you know, in one like when I was in jujitsu. There'd be like maybe a thousand people. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, but they're all like, they're not like watching you, but they're like, I got my kid over here. Got my, right, you know, right, right. I got my kid over here. Basically, that's what it was. But the thing is, is you would enter a your your pool, and there'd be like a prize money of like two thousand dollars or fifteen hundred okay. bucks or whatever. And then um, I think like then there's like Abu Dhabi where like the prize money is like fifty thousand dollars. Oh shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you went to Abu. You went to Abu Dhabi, right? Yeah. So yeah. So I've I've done the Abu Dhabi. You know stuff like that was still that was still the jujitsu thing. The Abu Dhabi uh, at the time was like every it was every four years, so it was like the Olympics of uh, grappling. Okay. So basically, that it was like you know like you do it. At, I think the first time was 1998, and then so it was every two years. So it was 98, and then like 2000, and then like 2002, 2004. You know, like they did it every two years. Yeah. And what, what was the first time you went pre nine 11? Uh, first, it, first time was, uh, 2000, uh, was we were supposed to do it for, um, when nine 11 happened. So they moved it to Brazil. That was the first time I had to go to, I went to Brazil right. for, that, for Abu Dhabi, but it was for, but it, they moved it to Brazil because you couldn't go to actual Abu Dhabi because of the flight restrictions. And right. Right. Yeah. Nine 11. So. Yeah. Very scared to go there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I but get that, it. Was, that 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 was a that was my uh, first like international, and then after that I would go there, um, and then I'd go to like Canada and um, and whatnot. At some point, you become a school teacher, right? Yeah, no, that, right? I, that, that was yeah. before I did any any of that. I was that was what uh, I was going to school to be a school teacher, and then while I was actually doing jiu-jitsu. Oh, prior to all this, prior, prior to, to all, all the that, yeah. I was, okay. I was, oh, a gotcha. I was the, and that, that's what allowed me to, uh, do jujitsu. Um, Oh wow. Like, so that funded your jujitsu. Pretty much. Gotcha. That was, like, that, that, that'd be my hobby of like, okay, I go to school, pay the bills and then I go to, um, gotcha. What grade, what grade were you teaching? Uh, at the time it was, I preferred third grade. That, okay. was, that was that was like the that was the sweet spot between brat and just a kid was, who yeah. couldn't understand anything. <laughs> yeah, for, first and second grade is like usually when they're still picking their nose. Third right. grade, third <laughs> grade is like where there's the aha moment where right. you show them something, they're like, "Ah, oh, okay, I get that." Okay, and then they're like, and then they're really excited about learning. And then anything older, like I've done high school, and I can't stay in high school because back when, uh, even probably when you went to high school. If you didn't want to go to high school, you just didn't go. And then when I started teaching, when you had to go to high school, there was kids that didn't want to be there and they're forced to be there. And then they make the rest of the day just suck. Yeah. Right. Where back when I, when I were like, if you were, like, were you, were, I mean, you were a teacher for a high school or were you like a substitute or like, I, I, I subbed yeah. and then I, uh, and then I'd like do long term, you know, type stuff. Okay. But like, that's where I would be like, ah, don't like high school. Junior high is okay, yeah. but um, what did you teach? What did you teach in high school? What was your in high uh, school? It, it would be like um, I did physics, and then I uh, and then driver's ed. You okay, know? <laughs> yeah, physics. All right. <laughs> I, I I was I'm that um that that kid that does the nerd stuff. Yeah. No <laughs> man, I I know it's just all those things were going through my head. He was like, I was a teacher. I mean, that's just like such a that's such a you know 
not shocking transition, but I was just curious to how, you know, you always wonder how somebody gets from one part of their life to another, like on their journey to wherever they go. And so, yeah, well, the, the one thing I liked about teaching was the aha moment, like just uh, like when you show somebody something like, ah, oh, okay, okay, I get that. Yeah. And the more I kept on doing jujitsu, I learned that I could do the aha moment by teaching jujitsu. So it wasn't, I thought the, I like teaching and I thought the only way that you could teach was doing like school, you know, like right. traditional. But then I found out it, it could be jujitsu. It, it, it doesn't matter. Like you're like, Hey, how do I save on taxes? And I'll show you how to do taxes. And you go, Oh, that's awesome. Like, you know, the aha moment I'd be like, cool. I'm now, now I'm a CPA, like whatever. Like it, right, it, was, right. just, it was just the fact of the aha moment and be able to teach didn't matter what it was. And then that's what actually pushed me to actually kind of go after it a little bit more than because I'm like, well, at 50, I could go back to teaching worst case scenario. Right. Because it's teaching. You know what I, I mean? I tell you what, d during this pandemic, you know, we like I've got two boys. So I got a 13 year old and a 15 year old. And, uh, you know, this whole like homeschooling and all this craziness with the pandemic. You know, my kids are out of school for who knows how long. And teachers deserve like a 20 time raise, <laughs> like a 20 times over raise, whatever we've been paying them. Cause Jesus, it is, it, it's hard. I mean, it's a challenge, man. Like it's a challenge. And I, I think even being at home, it's just like, I'm at home. Why do I need to do schoolwork? Like, but, well, because this is what school is now, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you no, know it, I mean? it's definitely hard for them to like understand. Cause like, but I, I guess it's the same way for us adults. It's like, well, I need to go to job. Like, like, is your studio in your house? No, it's uh, separate. I drive to it. But okay, but you see what I'm saying? Like, if it was like at your, it's kind of like if you had a gym at your house. Like, eh, yeah, it's right there. Eh. Yeah. But if you have to kind of go to it, now it's like becomes work, and you're like, okay, now I'm doing it because of this. The commitment, yeah, your commitment. Yeah, so like, okay, I've committed to going to the gym. I got. It's sending with these kids where they're like, uh, like, you know, my kids, like my, my kids, uh, seven. And he's like, well, what do I gotta do this? I'm like, well, you gotta just do this because if not, like, he didn't even know that he was in spring break. We still were doing school. Like, cause <laughs> like, we're just, we're going to do a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. Cause his thing is like, you know, what can I do with that? The, the, that stupid iPad, you know? And right, I'm like, right. well, you have an iPad as soon as you do your math work, iPad. Now we read iPad. And right. we do stuff. And then we um, started doing, um, we, I, I, we started writing a book together. So now he reads because now oh, he wow. wants to, uh, like to write, to kind of help him with write a book. So it was like, it kind of enforced his reading. So that's it was awesome. Kind of, that's killer. So that's awesome. That, that, so we've been working on that and he's been, he's like, cause he'll be like, when can I start my YouTube channel? And I'm like, <laughs> <"Kill it." laughs> like, you just hold up. Just slow down. Like, well, I, I'm happy that you're reading now. Like, right. <laughs> now I want to get my YouTube channel. Do you know this guy? And I'm like, no, I don't know that guy. Well, he lives in San Diego. And like, like he'll be like pulling up. Like his map is here. Like I'm like, how do you know? Well, it's on YouTube. Be like, oh, I know. Yeah. And he's making eight million dollars a month. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be like, dad. Dad, can I borrow ten thousand dollars? And I'm like, what for? And he's like, I'm like, <laughs> he's like, can I have ten thousand dollars? I'm like, he's doing a ten thousand dollar giveaway. And I'm like, no, no, we, no, it, I don't know what he's doing, but no, we don't have ten thousand right. dollars to give away. We're, we're, we're doing something else. <laughs> yes. The Nelson, the Nelsons are doing something else. <laughs> uh, we we'll, we'll give out a free bottle of water. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> some free Rico products. <laughs> exactly. The, uh, so, so at some point here, you transition out of, you transition out of jujitsu and start, you get into IFC. Is that the next thing that happens? The, I went from jujitsu and then I started coaching. Uh, I got my first UFC champion. I coach and he's actually the one that, um, like after coaching a couple uh, fighters and then not getting paid and I'm talking like not even like getting paid. So I was like, I'm going to go take your lunch money. And that's basically how I got into fighting. Like actually fight. Like I was, I, I just like coaching. I like teaching. That was my, that was my gig. And then, and then I started fighting just to go take their money. That was the whole reason why I even started fighting. Right. I, found out I was really good at it. And then 
like for I think my first seven fights, I didn't even train to fight. All I did was just no shit. I just wow. trained in jujitsu, but that's why my first seven fights are all uh, submissions. Like yeah, like, literally all I do is go down, take you down, submit yeah. you, take you down, submit you, and then um. Are you are you big at this point? Is I mean like you're the you're big like, country. Like yeah, well the thing is like jujitsu kind of screwed me with fighting because everybody knew me by um my nickname big country. Like literally, if I try to get like I I remember trying to get a fight and I couldn't even get a fight if my life depended on it for like I think a year and a half because people would go um, I'd be like yeah um, I got a heavyweight here his name's Roy Nelson um, yeah he, you know he has zero fights uh, you know he's a grappler you know blah 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 uh, you know what do you think and they'd be like yeah we'll fight him and then like a week later they'd go like I'd set up my own fights and then a week later they'd go. Yeah, it's Roy Nelson, um, Big Country, and and I'd be like, yeah, and they're like, yeah, no, because Big Country car- went further than Roy Nelson. Like nobody knew who Roy Nelson was. They would just go, oh, Big Country, that 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 grappler, that guy's a wrestler. And then I think, uh, and why why was and why was that bad? Like why wouldn't they want to fight you oh, because of that? The, the, because uh, you know I would go all those uh, grappling tournaments. Mm-hmm. So so. Across the nation, people knew me as Big Country, not Roy Nelson. And mm. so when you try to pick up a fight, they'd go, I don't want to fight that guy. That guy's good. Oh, so, gotcha. Okay. So that's right. the reason why like, I'd be like, oh, I got Roy Nelson here. He's never had a fight. Or he got one fight. You know, he's a grappler. You know, doesn't know how to punch. But you're, like, just, but you're just trying to get into the game. I was, Yeah, I was just trying to get in the game. And then uh, I think, I think my... Third fight, I got offered to fight in the UFC uh, to fight Tank Abbott. Yeah, and uh, and I was like, Nah, I'm good. You know, and they're like, well, Why not? And they're like, I'm like, I don't even know if I'm good. Like, like I still haven't trained. Like, I'm not training. And Tank, and Tank Abbott was a fucking ferocious. You know, yeah, and, beast but of the a thing man. is, is like 2020 hindsight now. If I, at the time, I would have beat him, but it like in my in my head, I was just like. I'm not ready for that. You know, like I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just a grappler, but yeah. Was he, a, he was already at M- MMA at that point. Yeah. He was, he's been in M- MMA for yeah. like seven years. And then I think, uh, then Frank Mir ended up taking that fight and it actually ended up submitting him. Okay. So like, hmm. I was like, see, I could have done that too. Ended like, up sub- in the submitting tank. Yeah. Okay. Up, oh, wow. Uh, so you could, yes. Yeah, like you could have done it. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah so I was like, Oh man, I should have took that fight, you know? And that, and it would have been like the biggest payday would, of my life. What would that have net? What would that netted for you? Like, what would that have netted for you at that point? At the, at the time, I think maybe five thousand bucks. Yeah, it was like twenty five hundred twenty twenty five. Like my first two fights, and, I I did a tournament and it was winner take all and it was three thousand dollars. Yeah, and it was two fights in one night for three thousand dollars. So it was fifteen hundred dollars. Two fights. Two fights. Two fights in one night. Holy crap! And you had and you had to win to win the money. Wow. And if you lost one and won one, what just that's you, got to it. <laughs> just, you, just fought, you just fought for nothing. Wow. Holy shit. That's some hardcore. That's hardcore right there. That's, 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 that was old school fighting. This is where you right. like, that's why I like grappling. Grappling was like the amateur version of fighting. It's like, what would you get for, what would you get for the, 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 the jujitsu? Like, what was your biggest paydays for the, when you were doing that? Stuff? Was, I think, uh, was 10 grand. That was the biggest yeah. payday. Okay. And then on average, it was always like a thousand bucks. But a yeah. thousand bucks a weekend back then is like totally. And like, and I think, uh, I think, I, I think I just had a mortgage. I think my mortgage maybe was six hundred bucks. And then mm-hmm. I had a roommate, so I was like, I could live off a thousand bucks for the like. Is all I had to do is just win one tournament a, a month. And I was like, I'm you already had a house back then. Huh? You already owned a house back then. <laughs> I, I I did I did because uh. I had one of those uh, where, like, I had the beauty beauty of both lives. My dad was fairly well off. My mom was dirt poor. So, like, on my mom's side, I think we got evicted out of probably, like, nine houses. You know, and just, like, so I think it was uh, – I was living with – like, just always seeing that, I was like, I'm, I'm out of here. You know, like, so I, I went and bought my own houses. I think the last time we got kicked out of a house, I was like, I'll just – do it and figure it out and be more financially yeah. responsible versus right. like li- living on li- living with somebody else to figure it out for me. 
Yeah, that's jarring too. Like moving, I we move, my parents moved around a lot, and it is it jars you. Like you kind of you have no settlement, which I guess yeah. in some ways works works as you get older. And you know, we travel a lot for our business, and like in some ways, it kind of sets you up in a good way. You know, because yeah, no, it, it it definitely made me a better uh, better and stronger person for sure. And I like I I got to see the benefits of like my dad with money and going dude, people with money is like, they're fucking assholes. And then also, you know, and then also going, yeah, but they make their life a lot easier. And then, <laughs> poor people, and then on the poor side going, well, you don't need money to be happy, but man, it makes things a lot easier. So like you get a, you get to choose on, on the both sides. Cause like I've seen where I've seen mess of really rich people. And then I'm like, dude, they went a douche. And like, what? Like, like, and yeah. they're just unhappy people. And then I met really poor people. And then they're like, dude, like they, they just get it. Like, it's kind of like this whole like COVID-19. It's like people either kind of get it. It's like I'm healthy or whatever. Or you're like, dude, I'm going to make, you know, there's an opportunity to make money. You know what I mean? Like, like they, they, there's two different, you know, where people are just like either got their hand out and like want to work for something or they don't, you know, like I've seen yeah. it on both sides. I'm like, like my dad taught me how to be a hard worker, but he was also the guy that didn't understand like, like you, you'd go work for a person and then, you know, bust your ass, you know, 50 hours a week and then go, Oh, that's all I got. And then my mom, you know, cleaned houses. So she was an entrepreneur, but she did just enough to pay the bills. Right. Or not even pay the bills because we got kicked out of a lot of houses. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Right. When did your when did your parent how old were you when your parents split up? I I think that I was probably maybe like one or two. Like oh, maybe, okay. You don't even probably don't even remember. Yeah, no, I I I, re I can remember living in two separate houses probably at the earliest age of probably like three or four. Yeah. Just going back and forth. Yeah, just going back and forth. Yeah. Did uh did your mom bring like did she ever get a uh, stepdad into the picture or just boyfriends no, or no my uh my dad had my stepmom and then um and then but that was like one of the reasons why they broke up <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> you know what I mean so <laughs> so I'm like hmm what do you mean what do you mean like with like you know like when your parents break up they usually there's a reason besides oh she's crazy or he's not or whatever but my stepmom was at, is like one of the reasons why my parents broke up because she would be the oh, other, gotcha. your stepmom step is one of the reasons right she She'd was the, the other, other woman. woman she was the other woman that came in gotcha okay gotcha which must have been weird growing up anyway <laughs> no it for me it was she was like she was she was like my mom because i had uh, my stepbrother uh, that was, he was six months older than me. So it was like, you know, we we're brothers and we like, oh, up, right, right. like at age, you know, two years old together. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was all the same. Yeah. What, um, so tell me, take me through going through getting into back into the, the IFC or whatever that is. The IFL. Your transition into there. IFL. Sorry. Yeah. UFC, Inter IFL, Inter International Fight League. My, my, uh, I'm bad, but I'm bad with the three letter. Uh, <laughs> UFC, IFL, Bellator, Bodog, uh, yeah. Elite XC. Uh, What's your first fight? As you go into this, you finally my get your first, first fight. My first fight was actually in, on an Indian reservation up by you. Okay. Uh, in the Bay not, Area. It, it was uh, like kind of like in the redwoods. Uh, Forgot oh, okay. Indian, Indian, like kind of like Pachanga up that way. Okay. Maybe down a little bit further. Um, but that was my first uh, first two fights. It was a tournament, and then my third fight was in Guam. And are then, you are you excited for these first fights? Like, are you finally like, all right, I'm fucking doing this. Like, I'm I'm on my no, way. No, I, I was I was excited to go, dude. I'm gonna make three thousand dollars. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna make three thousand dollars. Like you know how you know how much I would have to work like two months to make three thousand bucks. Right, right. All all over North Carolina and fucking back, right? <laughs> so like I can do it as a one shot. So that 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 was that was my motivation. And then yeah. I was like, oh, that's pretty some good. Of the, some of the did like Chuck Liddell and any of them help you kind of get into the scene or? No, um, actually, like, um, coaching. 
it was like Tito Ortiz, Rico, like uh, I remember that night. Um, actually, Tito Ortiz lost his belt to Chuck, like probably two weeks earlier than that fight. Um, but he was he was he was there. It was Tito, Rico, Rodriguez, like basically the whole you know top echelon of the guys were all there. Uh, but Tito was there, but he just lost his belt. And I remember he was uh, he was drunk or intoxicated. I don't I don't know exactly, but he's intoxicated. And I just remember him uh, eating um, Ben Ben and Jerry's ice cream with his fingers going. Ah, I don't, I don't know <laughs> Like it was, it was like it was it was the fun, it was funniest, but as, at the same time the saddest, because right. he was he was just he was just at the upper echelon. He was the UFC champ, and next thing I know, he's eating Ben and Jerry's ice cream. What? I don't know why. <laughs> and I felt and and I was like just going, oh, it can't be that bad. Like the life of a fighter can't be that bad. And then twenty, you know. 15, 20 years later, you're like, I know why. I know why now. <laughs> <I know. laughs> <laughs> it took you, it took a long, took you a long time to get there. That's for sure. <laughs> so you, so you start raising, you start raising in the ranks in this, and you know, are you kind of like, are, are people seeing you as a as a rising star in this in yeah, well, as, the, at this time? The the thing I, for me, I I, I want to say, um, I. I've been blessed. Like I was always considered a star because of my jujitsu background. So everybody knew who I was like from day. I mean, I remember like in 2003, Dana wanted to be my manager for, uh, um, for grappling. Like this is, you know, so that's why I say pre the Fertitas owning the UFC, Dana owned the UFC, the, uh, there was a John Lewis with the WFA. Um, like, so I was, all there before you know the whole what we know of as of the UFC yeah so, like um so I went to the IFL because of uh one of my friends was actually going to try out for the uh Ken Shamrock's team up in Reno and I went with him and he kind of pushed out and um I was like I'll do it and I and I basically took his spot and then I ended up beating everybody up and then Ken Shamrock was like, oh, I want you on my team. And I'm like, eh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in Bodog. And then um, I was doing Bodog, and then they kept on blowing up my phone, saying, no, no, you could do whatever you want. And I was the only fighter that was allowed to fight for the IFL and another organization at the time. Oh, wow. Because they wanted me so bad. And then um, I liked the IFL because you got paid like a, um, like a traditional, uh, I, I guess, uh, you know, sports star. You got paid monthly. So even if you didn't okay. fight, you still got paid monthly. A salary, yeah. You got a salary, and then when you fought, you got paid more. Yeah, a bonus. So you, so you got your fight money, and then you also got a bonus for winning too. Like so, it was like a traditional. Plus, you also got a salary. And Are then you getting I'll, like? Is this got like health care, or is there is any of that included? No, or? no health care. No, yeah. like the only health care you get is uh pretty much on fight night. If you get hurt, then they they'll cover it because of uh. They're they're forced to have insurance to right cover okay the fight right and then um then I won the and then I ended up going through the IFL winning the uh, IFL Grand Prix then I won the belts and then the IFL ended up um then the UFC ended up like kind of breaking them up or like uh IFL kind of ran themselves into the ground but then the IFL or then the UFC ended up buying like a lot of IFL contracts um yeah yeah the, the ifl went under basically right yeah it went under but then they, they kept on buying they bought a lot of uh fighters uh contracts like ben rothwell he just fought the other night um a lot of little guys uh and then they either went to strike force with scott coker or they got you know sucked up by the ufc and then for me i went to elite xc or at the time was affliction Okay. Rare affliction and affliction was uh, affliction the the t shirt brand the t shirt okay. company they they had they did two fights and the only reason why is all the heavyweights went over to affliction because they were paying out money just to pay out money. Right, like, right. And you're like, no, sign they me had, up. Yeah, they, sign me they up. had crazy. They had crazy money for a minute there. Yeah. 
So you're like, ah, sign me up. Like, I mean, that's where Fed- why Fedor went over there, Andre Alosky. Uh, ben Rothwell even went over there for a second. Um, but we and that's a, is that a contract? You're going over there under contract? Like, yeah, I'm fighting so you, for you yeah, exclusively? You'd, you'd, yeah, you'd go over there and they'd, they'd pay you, you know, a couple bucks to, you know, sign the contract. And then you basically sit and wait until you get a fight. And then you get a fight and then you do a fight. But then they went under two. And then it was either go to Strike Force or go to the UFC. That was like the two, because uh, that was right when Pride was going this way. When they found out like the Pride was funded by the Yakuza. Oh shit! <laughs> so, so then they. Um, it's so funny. They, I read. I was. I was reading up on you. I read a little thing about oh the the controversy with Pride, but then it didn't go into what it was. So. Yeah, gotcha. so it was like they they were paying you know like because uh, they were on like regular like network TV where pride at the time would, you know, like 10 million to 50 million people would actually watch the, uh, the fights. Right. You know what I mean? So it was like, it was like the Super Bowl. A lot of that, people. It's a yeah, lot of people. A lot yeah. of people it's crazy, numbers. crazy numbers. Um, so then we, so it was either go to sign, sign with strike force or UFC. And then, um, that was with the UFC had the ultimate fighter and then strike force. Um, and then I ended up signing with the, the UFC doing, you know, UFC. And then I was in there for like eight or nine years. And then, um, I wanted to work with Scott Coker. And then that was the reason why I went ended up going to Bellator because of Scott Coker. So you, you had, um, when you were through with the UFC, this is how, how long is it into your career that you do the, 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 the reality show? Is this a couple of years after being on UFC or is it right as you transition think, into uh, there? I, I think I did maybe Five, I've already been fighting five years, so I was already okay. kind of like I already had a like. That's why I knew like if I did the the TV show, nobody was gonna beat me. Like I like I was ready to fight. Uh, I think at the time was uh, probably like Andre Arlovski was the champ. I was like, dude, I'll fight that guy. You know, like I'm not like it wasn't. He was like I mean it was like Tim. It was either Tim Sylvia I think was the champion at the time. So I was like, I already knew like the only people that were going to either give me a hard time is the top five guys in the world. And I yeah. know they're not going into the the house because I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in the top five yeah. in the world. So and nobody's going to fight for free because they yeah. were a lot smarter than I was. But you were just making, but you're making a name. Like sometimes you got to do like, you got to do those things to get your name out into the well, public no, for whatever no, reason. It wasn't even the public, like, because I was already on network TV with the IFL. The IFL was already on like uh, network TV. So for me, it was to basically cement my legacy with the UFC, where there was automatically, I already knew they had to put millions of dollars into investments, basically yeah. promoting the show, blah, blah, blah. So that yeah. I had it secure. You, do, they help, do they help get you sponsors and stuff? Is UFC? No. No, Every, that's on you. That's your, like, that's your yeah, responsibility. Yeah. Just like, just like, okay, all you got to do is win it and then you're going to be a champ, you know, or versus, versus going, no, no, I want to get paid to fight. No, no, no. You're going to be a champ. <laughs> right. It's like, you're going to be a star. You're not going to have any money, but you're going to be a star. Yeah. That, that's, that's what I learned about. That's when uh, everybody, I think uh, after I won the ultimate fighter, that's the first time I got sued because I'm TV rich. You know what I mean? Like, right. Oh shit. You're, yeah, you're like, like mo- motherfuckers thought you had a lot of money. They're like, oh, I just saw him on TV. I better see him. You fucked him both slice. He, that guy right. got he's, paid. He's, he's loaded. <laughs> you're like, I'm a motherfucker. I did it for free. And I'm like, huh. that's not TV rich. I'm like, people don't know what TV what do you, rich is. What do you get sued for? What do you get sued for? Like a street fight? No, you get sued for like, uh, like for me, uh, I was with uh, some other uh, organization. They sued me because I went to the UFC and they're like, no, that, because – because I did fight Kimbo and they thought they were going to get paid, but like, it was, it was just like a whole, you know, cluster, for, you know, and you're like, um, and then when you're tra- telling the UFC, like, no, we're, we're, we're hundred percent legal. Let them, let them fight it out. Like they're not going to win nothing. But yeah. that's when I found out that you could get sued for anything. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like they'd be like, uh, yeah, he's white. I know he's white. Here you go. I'm going to sue him. Right. right. No, no, no. I have a little Indian in me. You know, whatever it is, you know, like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Right. What, um, around this time, I, I, I don't know when this, I don't know when all this starts, uh, 
but somewhere along the line, you and you and Dana White have, uh, you know, a, a kind of a funny combative relationship. You know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how to how you look at it, but you know, you can. There's lots. Of, you know, even after that thing, you kind of go over there, like, oh, he's like, you know, he comes over here and he wants. You know, after you win the Kimbo fight, he's like, oh, he wants to like get props for you know, like just lasting or whatever. Like you have this kind of. Yeah. Uh, no, that was um, I that was me being at the time was being smart because I think I gave um, I was I was trying to get a sponsor. I was trying to get Burger King a spot uh, a shout out. So I was trying to yeah. get a sponsorship. So that's why I was like, you know, like anything you want, what can I get? Can I get a double wobble with cheese? You know, because I'm looking on the ring, ring and I'm looking like what's all, what's our, because I already knew I was sponsored by Tap Out. Oh, right, right, right. right. So I'm looking on like who, yeah, like David Busters wasn't there. You know, you're looking like who, who else? Okay, Budweiser, you know, like, and I'm like, okay, Bird King. I'm like, okay, I'll, I give Bird King a shout out and then kind of roll it in. And he took it as in like, I was like, you know, I'm not his bitch type thing and I was like no I was just plugging Burger King and right. then probably for three years after that anytime I do a fan sighting people would bring me a, a double whopper with cheese with no pickle like people <laughs> would just bring it to me like oh that's what he wants that's my and I'm and then and then for the longest time I would try to get Bur uh you know Burger King as a sponsor and then I'd always get cock blocked and I'm like because you know they they were like Ugh. and I'm like dude Burger King owes me you know how much money I gave them because of, right, of right. shout out for all, that. All my fans are buying Burger King because of me. Right? And, then, and then plus people go, dude, you remember when Dana was so mad at you? And I'm like, yeah. And it's because you asked for a double whopper with cheese, no pickle. For Burger King. You know, like I'm like, it like it played on for like three years. I'm like, dude, Burger King owes me some money. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny though because he was. I was. I was listening to some of his. His. Uh, he had like some negative comments towards you that you know. Oh, you want sponsors, but you can't get them. He's like, well, you know, look at that hair and look at that beard. And I'm like, that's why I love this motherfucker. Like that's why I like. Look at that hair. Look at like. Look at the mullet. Look at the beard. Like that's fucking. You know why I'm thinking this dude's cool. And obviously he's like, oh, you know, clean up and cut your hair and shave. And, and I was well, like, I just thought that was. There's a weird, some weird politics in there, like that you need to be this clean cut kind of cat. And I was like, I think the reason you stand out is because you're not this clean cut cat. Well, that was, well, the whole thing is, if you notice, nobody ha had up until, um, until I got in there, nobody was allowed to have hair or a beard. Right. I'm the one that Why? set standards for that. Oh, it's because you got to look like a Greek God. And I knew right. I couldn't look like a Greek God unless I was fucking, you know, Pumping my ass full of shit, right, right? You know, so like, like, yeah, I could go that way, but I can't make myself six foot six. You know what I mean? I can't like make myself grow, and you know, I can't you know look big, and I could do all that stuff, but I'm on a beer budget, you know. So you gotta right. you gotta work with what you got, and you just kind of go the um, opposite, and like the whole beard thing and the mullet came from is uh, because everybody called me a big country. So I was like, I'm going to grow a mullet out just for the TV show. Right. And then the more it stuck out, the more I kept it. Yeah. And then, and then like um, I, the only reason why I even grew a beard uh, was, uh, what was it? I was told to do something and then I grew it out of spite and then I grew the beard. Okay. Out. <laughs> right. And then, uh, oh yeah, because uh, that's what it was. It was it was to cut my mullet and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay. And so I grew the beard out. And then um, I was at a. Well, they asked house. you. To, they asked you to cut the mullet. The mullet, yeah. And then and then I grew the beard out, as as in like I'll show you. And I grew the um, beard out. And then we went to a press conference, and everybody else is wearing t-shirts and and you know in the jumpsuits and stuff like that. And I'm the only one that shows up in a three piece suit. And, they're, and this is the first time that they sh they saw the beard. And they're like, what the hell? You know, like, like all Bishop complained that I had a mullet and the beard. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm the only one in a three-piece suit. Like, how can you be mad at me? I'm in a three – I'm in a, a – I'm, I'm like, I spent good money. I got – I went to a – raw got me a, um, a polo ruffler in, um, three-piece suit, and everybody else is wearing jumpsuits. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, so it's not, so it's not really what I'm wearing. You just want me to shave my head, yeah, and my beard. That's just a, that's a weird, that's a weird. Uh, they want to have like a look, like a standard look to me. That's funny. 
Yeah. Where I, I wasn't was, sure. I wasn't sure where that came from. I wasn't sure if that was actually like people were telling you to do it or you know. No, the the only reason why I grew the mullet out was because I was named Big Country, and I was like, I thought it'd be yeah. funny for the TV show. I'm like, yeah, and then I show yeah. up in a in my I Rock, you know, Trans Am, you know, like in 1984, like I'm I'm, the, I'm that guy. <laughs> Like that, that was right. more, like, I was trying to do my own little joke for myself. Yeah. And then when I was told that, you know how, like when someone tells you, you can't do it, then I'm like, Oh, I go opposite. If they would have said, Oh dude, we love your hair. It looks so good. You know, like right, you right. Grow, it, grow your beard out. You know, I'd be like shave, you know, I'd be a juicy. I want you to get, you know, like, I want you to get fatter. You know, like if they would have done that. I would right. be like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's I, gonna six pack. <laughs> I want you to get fatter. <laughs> That's fun. I, you know, one of one of the funnier controversies that happened to that on that show, which I thought was just I laugh my ass off. But, uh, you know, I guess that I, Zach, I think I'm saying I can't say his name. right. I think it was Zach. But Zach gets busted for jerking off. And then, uh, like, the whole team, like, shuns him. I was like, what's the matter with jerking off? Like, what the, what the, what's the matter with that? Like, why did the whole team shun him? Like, he was just like, one he, of those, he, he was just one busy? of those guys. He, he was just one of those guys that's so easy to pick on. He's just okay. like, he, like, he and just they need wanted, any he, reason. Yeah. He was just one of those guys that just like, like pick me, pick me. Just, I just want to be your friend, man. Like he's right. just one of those like weird cats where you're like, I wouldn't want to be your friend, but then like <laughs> you could like pick anything out and you'd just start teasing them. And then you'd right, be like, right. that wasn't me, man. That wasn't me. Yes, it was. It was you. <laughs> Like, you know, like, no. And, and the more, you know, he would cry about it, the more it actually stuck versus he would be like, that's right. If he would have just owned it, be like, that's right. I did it. You look at it with your mom or, you know, like, or whatever. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Like just bust so balls. He was like, it wasn't me, man. It wasn't. Right. I wasn't in there last. No, it was you. <laughs> I know it was you. Okay. okay. Oh, that's good. That's fuck. Yeah. <laughs> totally get it. I mean, especially like being on the road, man. You always fight like you're I'm with 20 fucking guys, you know, like you're just endless, endlessly busting balls as much as you can for anything. So yeah, yeah. And, okay. And just, now that just, now that makes sense. All right. It just it just stuck the more you fought it, the more he kept on just going, No, it wasn't me, man. It was Kimbo. He Kimbo was in there before I was, you know, like he would like you're like, no, no, it was you. No, it wasn't. Kimbo ain't- Kimbo ain't jerking off. That motherfucker is in the porn industry. He's, he's probably getting pussy left and right. You don't need to jerk off. What? Um. So you you're you're in the you're in the UFC for a while, man. Like that's a like that's a fucking incredible career. I mean, it was like eight year, nine years, eight yeah, years. Yeah. Uh, no, I was in there for a, for a minute, and I I could I I mean, the thing is, is I wanted. Because I've been in every you know every aspect of the game, you know, from when. Uh, um, when the Fertitas and uh, they, when they sold it to IMG, the, you know, the UFC, the, mm-hmm. the whole aspect of the game kind of changed, like, cause IMG doesn't know how to run a, um, you know, basically a, a fight organization. Like they were working through their kinks. So I was like, eh, I don't know if this is going to be the same, you know? So then yeah. that's when I went to go work with Scott Coker. And one of my other friends, uh, Mike, uh, he was, he's over there. So I went, went, went over kind of what I already knew. And I knew Scott liked to, um, he, he likes fighters. He's a martial artist himself, you know, so, and I, and I've always wanted to work with him. So that's the reason why I kind of jumped ship and like they were, you know, they paid the same as the UFC. So it's like, wow, we're, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, you're like, ah, uh, um, what do you, what do you, you know, what are you staying for? And then like, cause the other one, was your was your contract up or did you get bought out or you know like was it no uh, yeah, like, in, like contract, if you if, I, if you were in a, if you were in a band you have like you know you got to deliver five records and then after five records yeah, you're no, free I, to do I, did, I did all my um I did all all, the, all my fights and then um, then you have a a period that you're only allowed to negotiate with them and so you wait through that whole right. clause and then you can kind of basically you can go oh but as soon as my clause was up. They they thought they were gonna like leave they 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 were like thought I would be like can I get my job back man I want to you know can I please fight you know and I was like I'm out because I already yeah. knew where I, I already knew I already had because I was already somebody like if you're not you, some of these fighters are like just we'll just say um, fighters that just need to make you know a couple bucks 
You know what I mean? Where they're just like, I'm just happy to be a fighter. And I'm like, I'm past it. I'm too old to be going, I'm a fighter. Already, people already know who I am. Like, it's not a, yeah. that type of game. So you're like, people won't watch me fight. Did it and, end on, did it end on bad, on a bad note? Or was it just like uh, time to move on? No, it was just, it's just one of those, like, uh, when Bellator offers you more money than the UFC, you just go, I'm a price fighter. I fight for money. Yeah. So then you right. know where the money is. Yeah. So, I mean, if the UFC was like, you know what, I want $20 million, you know, I'm going to give you the end. But you already knew that's not what you, the old organization before it got bought out, mm-hmm. they, 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 you could, there was more finagling where, IMG came in and they were more corporate. They're like, no, no, our, our profit margin exactly is 17.5%. Right. You know, and they didn't realize they didn't, they didn't go off of like, well, this fighter over here brings us $20 million and this guy, right. they're just like, no, we got to have so like, it's, yeah. The, the bean counters come in and start fucking everything up. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, dude, this is not a fight business anymore. And then that's the reason why the, for a period where the UFC kind of went to shit for a minute, Remember, there was like two years, like in, I think, probably 16, 17, uh, and 18. And then, um, and then all the only way that uh, they, the USC actually came back was because of um, Connor fighting uh, uh, Mayweather. Right. And I was like, and then they're like, oh, oh, I forgot about the USC. That's where that guy came from. You know, like, yeah. But nobody was watching the USC before. Like, it, it right. was like, there was like Bellator and UFC are basically the same. You know, level until Connor fought Mayweather, and then actually, but it's Mayweather that brought Connor. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> like I know who Mayweather is, but who's this Irish fella? What do you think of Connor McGregor? Uh, you know what? I don't know him personally. I've met him a couple times. Um, okay, I, I really couldn't, you know, tell you much. Uh, but from like some of his actions. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I would say a kid that gets a lot of money that doesn't know what to do. <laughs> that's, probably the, that's probably the best analogy I can use. It's kind of like John Jones when he got money, you know, it's like, it's like anybody in the NFL or, you know, NBA where they're, they're a bunch of kids that get money really fast where they're like, my shit don't stink. And then, yeah. And then find, find, then they really find out that there's somebody that's, you know, bigger, stronger, and, well, you know, it's just like a rich guy where he's like, you know, I got money, I'll sue you, I'll sue you. and then there's a guy that's homeless and is like, dude, I will kill you. I really don't care. Right, right. Now, so who are you scared of, the rich guy or the poor guy that had nothing to lose? Yeah, you always got to be scared of the guy with nothing to lose is who you got to fear. <laughs> right, that, not the guy, oh, well, I got a couple bucks. If you got something to lose, then you got, it, you got one little advantage over them. Yeah. I, uh, you got you hang out with Mike Tyson. Are you guys close? I saw some pictures on your Instagram. We followed each other on Instagram for a while, and so I, when your Tyson pictures, I was yeah, like, "Wow, no, I'm hanging out with Mike I actually, Tyson." Uh, I met. Uh, I mean, I've known Mike for back when I used to bounce at the at the Rhino a long time ago. Oh, so uh, you were a bouncer? I was a bouncer. A lot. I, I've, I had a lot of jobs. That's uh, awesome. So the uh, rhino, the rhino. What is the rhino like? A uh, experiment, experiment rhino. What's up? You don't know. It, 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 it's, not, a, it's a strip club. Nice. So you were a bouncer at a strip club for a while. So I was a strip I love, club. See, why did I? Why did you wait this long into the podcast to drop this gem? <laughs> <laughs> why didn't this come in the first five minutes? <laughs> when I, when I was asking there. you about your Led Ze- about your Led Zeppelin decadent moment, like I was a bouncer at a strip club. <laughs> But see, but that was that was, that was a hotel bill. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. So you're a bouncer at the Spearmint Rhino. Yeah, so that's the first time I think I met Tyson, and then um, how long do you how how long do you work at a strip club for? Bouncer at a strip club, not a steady job, but like weekends or something, or like were you there yeah, for? Yeah, I, I I literally worked um, at the club Friday and Saturday, only because one of my uh, good friends was a manager at the time, and I was teaching him privates for jujitsu. And he's like, dude, I just need somebody I can trust. I'm like, this is back in this is back in the jujitsu 20, 20 year old yeah, big country. I, yeah, I was probably maybe 26, 27. You must have been slaying pussy, my God. I, I was I I, I, was I, I know I'm not I know I'm not gonna get any out of you, but, <laughs> but 
Um, but I, that's where I, I think I first, that's where I first met, um, Mike. And then, um, you know, years later I met Mike at, um, when I did, um, I mean, were you talking to him or were you just kind of like, Oh, hi, Mr. Tyson or whatever, or did you, yeah, like, just actually... like, you know, you know, like, and then going and then seeing the whole, like, kind of like the Tito thing going, Oh, wow, man, he, he's at the bottom, you know, <laughs> like where you're right, like, right, right. And then, um, but then I met, then I became friends with Tyson on a movie set for Kickboxer. What, uh, Kickboxer two, I think it was. I did it because I did a movie. Um, oh, okay. Went to Thailand, and that was 2015, I think. So I've known Tyson. Probably so he was on. Back. He was in the movie, and you were in the movie. Yeah. So, um, so that's where I, I became friends with uh, Tyson because he's a uh, good friends with my friend Rob, who was a producer. Uh, and then um, that's where the whole Tyson has his Tyson Ranch now with the weed and the um, uh, basically the whole they have a whole other like aspect of the the weed ranch in Palm Springs or whatever for the Kind Festival or whatever bullshit. Okay. All okay. that. So, but that that's how like I kind I met him through one of my friends Rob's through a uh, um, basically doing the movie. And then, yeah. uh, and then I remember just talking to Tyson about, uh, uh, when I got, um, uh, when I got fined by the Brazilian commission for, not, you know, uh, pushing, uh, or kicking a ref. And he was talking to, he was just basically how you have to kiss ass to make some money, you know, kiss ass to make it, uh, money or, you know, like shit like that. And I'm like, Ah, uh, you're 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 tr that is correct. He's like, I was I was you. And he goes, but it, but I it cost me a lot more money to cost you. And I'm like, that is true. That is true. Yeah. You know, like where he's just talking about how his life, where he's always tried to live his own, you know, through his own tune. And then sometimes he had to eat. You know, basically you had to learn how to eat crow a little bit. Yeah. to Kind of get ahead. Yeah. Did you see that? Uh, did you see his comeback video the other day that he posted? Yeah, no, he, he's he's doing I, the the best is uh because I, I did a commercial with him too for uh it's called Copper Gel, and um I remember holding mitts for him, and I was like, dude, he even had it back then. He's just he's just like ingrained to his body that just that movement. It's just like crazy. Fucking, that shit was a, he's a beast. I mean, like that fucking I was like, oh my god, dude. The the fact that he could still it's. It, it's just like ingrained in his body, just that like shutter step to the left, and then you know shutter step to the right, and then jab, you know, to hook, hook, and then overhand right. Like I'm just like, man, he just like he he still has it. Like it, you sparred, but, you said you sparred, you sparred with him on one of the no, set, on one of the we were, He was holding mitts for me, and then I was holding mitts for him. Okay, gotcha. And the one thing is, he knows how to hit mitts, but he doesn't know how to hold mitts. <laughs> he's not used to holding mitts right? <laughs> is he got he is that giving you like advice or anything like you guys have that kind of relationship yeah no we like we um i think we definitely the what we bonded over because everybody I, I think when the first time we were you know with the movie he's like they're like um tyson doesn't like to be touched so don't touch him don't you know like if you're going to act like you're going to hit him, you know, because we're doing a fight scene. If you're going to act like you're okay. going to hit him and, you know, like, you know, he might haul off and hit you, you know, like they're warning him, you know. And then, but Mike knew who I was from fighting and respected me from fighting. So then we started clicking and they're like, that's, he wasn't like that with Van Damme. He was, you know, like, it, I, I want to call it like a Kimba rules. Like when Kimba was in the house, Kimba respected me because he knew who I was. And it's uh, I call it like jailhouse rules, like you know, like you're like, oh that guy, leave him, he's cool, he's cool, I respect yeah. him, he's cool. And then there's that other guy, oh he's a punk, and be like Zach, that that's a punk, we're gonna, we're gonna make him right. an example. Right. Like so, that that's kind of how like um, Tyson looked at me. It was like, oh you know, like jailhouse rules, like I respect that guy, and like they didn't understand, and then we automatically had a bond together because we're both fighters. It was it was, right. it was crazy, right. but it was but he gave me a lot of information about like. You know, don't kid. You know, you got to kiss ass to kind of get ahead, and, and you know, do shit that you're supposed to, even though you don't want to do. And did like, you? Oh. And, so you were in you were in Thailand when you were filming this. That one we we did we did a little bit in Vegas, and then um and then we really got in touch uh 
Um, in Thailand, I think we were there for 20 days. No oh, shit. Yeah, Did you we, get hammered with Mike Tyson in Thailand? I didn't get hammered. Uh, Ty, Tyson wasn't a big drinker then. He, he's more. No. He, he was still always. He was the always. Weed. Did you get? Did you get? Did you get high as a kite with Mike Tyson in Thailand? No, nope, because you know I still was a fighter, so like you can't get high. Right. Oh, we can't. Oh, you can't even smoke weed. You were not allowed to smoke weed. You can't like wow. now. They, now they've changed the uh, the rules to a certain bit, but this is back when uh, when uh, UFC just got USADA. So you couldn't, uh, uh, you could literally, you couldn't do anything. The only thing that was, uh, I, or the funniest one was, uh, actually got the UFC to admit to, um, Jeff Novitzi was, uh, the first, uh, drug thing was, um, it was right when, uh, Ch- uh, John Jones got busted for cocaine and they, uh, they like, they caught him doing, uh, like, you know, in his blood for uh, doing cocaine and then um, but they weren't allowed to use it because it's a recreational drug so they're like oh, it's okay and I'm like cocaine's not cool like yeah. as a re- as, as, as recreational not recreational you, you can't get a prescription for it right. it's completely <laughs> right. illegal like, you can't go down to the cocaine dispensary right you're like, like well technically you can't like if he did it on the day of the fight then he would get busted but if you do it two days before the fight we're good. Like, it's just, <laughs> like you're like, the logic doesn't make any sense. But like, say you smoke mm. weed two days before, and then you smoke weed the day, uh, two days before, you don't smoke on the day of the fight, it's still in your system, and then you get in trouble. Huh. You know what I mean? Like, so that's, it doesn't that's make, some weird rules. It doesn't, yeah, because the thing is, is like, I would love to fight a guy that's high the day of. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Because I'm like, yeah, he's gonna be a little slow. Did you ever have you ever fought like hungover or you know just uh, after actually, a night of party no, and no, or ever ever fought drunk? Have you ever fought drunk or anything? Uh, so when you're starting out, when you're uh, starting out, not in Bellator, of course. No, um, my third fight, um, I was, I found out I was fighting, um. I was supposed to be fighting this one guy and it was in Guam and I was like, and then they're like, Oh, he, he's not going to fight, but I already had tickets to Guam and I've never been to Guam. I'm like, dude, I'm going to take a free trip. And yeah. then it's a long trip from Vegas to Guam. It is. So, yeah. so we got hammered all the way there. Cause I thought I was on a free vacation. And then as soon as I get off the flight, they're like, Oh yeah, your guy's back in. And I was like, oh, and I was literally fighting the very next day. And I'm like, are you serious? And I was like, so I was messed up. I was like, are you like, I like mentally I was already fried because I was already on vacation mode. Right. And, right. And I was two sheets to the wind. And then I'm like, oh, I, gotta, I gotta sleep this off. And then I'm like, I can't sleep this off. I gotta, I gotta train. Like it was, it was, it was like the biggest, you know, mind screw. And then, I ended up winning the fight, so but then I ended up beating him twice because then later after the fight, then we had a, a beer drinking contest, and I won that one too. So, <laughs> beer fight. You and the fight, you and the fighter had a beer drinking contest. Yeah, yeah, it was like because like an after party, and then they had a drinking contest afterwards. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> but but generally, like I would imagine, like you know, it's pretty serious. You know, at least for me, I know, like if I've got a show and my hometown or LA or New York or London, like I'm not going to party the night before. Like I'm not going to do shit the night before because I, it's I, like, I just, my mind, I need to like, I need to, in my mind, all, I got to fucking destroy everything. Like I got to crush. I don't want the slightest bit of a hangover to even get, make me 1% less, you know, because you know we do three and a half hour shows. So it's like even that well, much yeah. more, I gotta, I gotta have like, I gotta have this stamina that keeps me going too. So is that like, what's your mindset going in? Like, are you like that? Is it the same or different or? Usually like, uh, the day of the, like for me, I like to, um, think of like, just like going to practice. Um, but mindset wise, like literally day of the fight, I'll just like literally try to sleep as much as I possibly can because right. you got to sit in the, uh, the locker room for like three hours doing twiddling your thumbs going, um, when am I fighting next? When am I fighting next? 
Yeah. And you just have this anticipation where you're just like, dude, I want to fight, want to fight, want to fight. So. Are you not? Are you not allowed to leave the locker room once you no, get to the once, building? Once you once you get in the back, you're not allowed to leave the locker room. You're not allowed to eat. Um, oh shit! Okay. You're not, hmm. you're like literally, the only thing I think you're depends on where you're at. You're only allowed water. Uh, I think in the in the Vegas, you're allowed like maybe Gatorade, but normally you're all you're you're just allowed water. You're not allowed to huh. eat. You're not allowed to do, take anything because you know you might pop a pill. You might be on the coke. You know. You know they're trying right, to right. Trying to make it as even as possible is what they try to say what what they're doing. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Yeah, that's crazy. And then I I would imagine the excitement as you're walking towards the ring has got to be just electric. I mean, that's got to be something that you get addicted to. You know, just that that buzz. And is no, that or, or is the buzz or is it, or are you just shutting everything out? No. Um. There's there's some different environments like um I remember like Abu Dhabi. Uh, like New Jersey, like New York area, like Vegas, you definitely still get that vibe, like just that. The you can just feel the energy, and I'm like, I can imagine just like you, like you know, being a rock star. You're like, you're like, dude, I get it. I get the vibe. You're just like, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I want to play to these guys. I just, like you just, you're kind of like, you're in your zone, but you like that because that's the worst thing in a fight is you're fighting, you feel like you're, you know, you're going on the right pace, but then you hear a boo. You're like, oh, dude, I got, I got, I got to bring it up a little bit. I got to bring it, you know. Oh, oh shit. Okay. I was, I always wondered that. Like, I've always wondered if like dudes are, can hear that and are, are feeding off of it or if you're just blocking it out and there, like, just like, fuck you guys. There, the, for the most part, there's guys that like, kind of like, we'll just say the, the boring guys that are just kind of just going out there and just kind of just getting the W. We'll just, we'll say they're, uh, I call them, um, they're name, the name actual one. Who? Who's Name one. Who's this? Who you no, thought, who you like, 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 we'll say like, jo- like if you watch George St. Pierre when he was younger, like yeah. uh, coming up to the, uh, the, but once he became champion, he became a guy that just would just fight as in just to win. He wasn't right. fighting. He wasn't fighting to do anything else except to but win. Not putting on a show. Yeah. He wasn't trying to put on a show. He's just, I wanted to win. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with that, but the thing is, is that's where you get a lot of, but you get a lot of haters. And but in our business, you either need to be loved or hated. When you you just can't go. Well, how do you feel about that guy? Uh, but if you go, right. man, I hate that guy, or dude, that guy's awesome. Either one works. Yeah. If, if, if I hate, you know, it's like a Connor, like, oh, I hate that guy, or the guy's like, oh, I'm Irish, I love him. You know, like it's you one or the <laughs> other. Right. <laughs> so, right i hear you so it's better like yeah like you want i mean you want to be a character anyway i mean i think that's like you, like people want to star like that's what they're paying for when they go to the thing yeah, you either like, be loved or hated but you, you gotta have an opinion because if you're in, especially in the fight business it's like i either want to get i either want to see you get your ass kicked or i want to see you win it's one or yeah. the other but if you're like eh, right. how do you feel about that guy eh. Eh. yeah you uh you you just posted a picture of your boy on your Instagram. It's his with his first black eye, Jackson. Dude, he yeah no he he literally he was his cousins came over and they he fell on some uh they were slipping and sliding on the cement and he literally landed flat on his face. Oh okay okay because I see and him I'm in like, the I th- I see him in the gym with you a lot. I thought he was like you know no, sparring or something. Literally like, like it it wasn't anything cool like. He broke his arm like, you know, 10 weeks ago and it's because he fell out of his bunk bed. Like, it's nothing cool. Like, right. where everybody else is like, well, what did he do? No, uh, he fell. Or, you right. know, like, where he's <laughs> been doing some other really cool stuff and then, but he doesn't get hurt doing that stuff. But, like, what'd you do? Well, I fell on my face. Like, how'd you fall on your right. face? Well, I slipped on some water. <laughs> right. You, but I mean, I, I would imagine fatherhood is, you know, really, I mean, I, mean, I I got two boys myself. It like changed my whole outlook on life. And it's such, it's such an amazing thing, transformation really that happens in your life. I mean, tell me about, you know, having, you got the one kid, you got Jackson. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, my, my wife yeah, says one and done. But, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, no, Jackson, um, like soon as he, uh, he is definitely, you know, uh, a changer because your aspect of life kind of definitely change. I mean, the first time when my uh, my wife found out she was pregnant, she was all upset. And I'm like, "It's okay, honey. It's okay. We've been married for five years." Oh, you guys, you guys weren't trying. 
No, we were. <laughs> But we were trying, but you're not, not you're not you're not using you're not using the pullout method. Are you just going up in there? <laughs> no, we there, there was no there was no uh, like we weren't trying, but then we were not trying. Like right, okay. There, so like in my head, I'm like it it was were it was definitely one of those things. Like if we get pregnant, we get pregnant because I understand yeah. how babies are made. <laughs> But my wife was freaking out. And I'm like, but honey, but we've been married for five years. It's okay. Right. I'm like, we did it right. We did it right. It's not the other way around. Right, right. But then, it, you know, but then we both, you know, it definitely, definitely changed my wife. And then, but um, it made us uh, definitely grow, you know, definitely stronger because it put definitely a perspective of what's important in life. Yeah. Yeah. Right on, man. That's killer. He uh, does he want to follow in his dad's footsteps? Uh, he he does, but I I don't want him to. Uh, he because he wants to be a fighter, an army man, and what else does he want to be? Uh, fighter, army man, and then um, and police. So those are the three things he wants to be. And I'm like, I don't want you to do. I don't want you to do any of that. Can, can, <laughs> can, can I make you a scientist? Right. <laughs> Can I make you a school teacher? <laughs> but he, but he, he's definitely great. He's going to definitely do some type of sport. Um, yeah. But I, I don't, yeah, I just, I just don't want him to do what, I mean, I gave up because I was going to be a professional baseball player. That was my, my dream. And then uh, the older I got, the more I, I hated politics. And then that was the reason why I got out of baseball. Yeah. You know, with the, when you got, coaches and alumni paying for your kids to be on, you know, the team and, you know, stuff like right. that. Right. And then that, that was the reason why I started doing individual sports. That's why I started uh, doing like martial arts and, and wrestling and doing jujitsu and because it all became on me. And, but then the older I got, I found out politics is everywhere. Yeah. I was going to say, I can imagine <laughs> there's some politics. It seems like there's politics in <laughs> MMA. I don't, you know, I'm not that involved, but just from the outside looking in, you know, yeah, but it was one of those things I didn't learn when I was a kid until I got, you know, way older going, oh, there's still politics. <laughs> Roy, thank you for being on. No fucking regrets, man. I really I appreciate, appreciate having, having on here. had a great time. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. It was awesome. I really, this has been great. And uh, best with everything in Bellator. I mean, you got, maybe you've got some no audience fights coming up or something. You know, uh, still... I'm hoping, I'm hoping they, they start doing some. That's uh, going to be weird, man. That is going to be so fucking weird. No, it's uh, the way I look at it. I don't it, think so? Like, no, it's like having, um, it's like having a good day of practice. Okay. It's, like, it's like going to the gym, you know, like, and you're like, ah, right. except the right, camera. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you just got to make sure you have a good day at the gym. The only yeah, maybe maybe it'll be easier. Practice. I think it's mentally, I think it's easier because you because you're not thinking like, um, like in a typical fight when you got a crowd, you're like, okay, I got to please these guys. Um, how can I go out there and make sure the fans are happy? Then I get my W. Like, there's a lot of different things where in that in that type of environment, you're thinking only one thing: is how to win. Yeah, there, there's no like fans. You don't care about like who's at home because right. You know, it's like uh, everybody always. You know, like are you are you a, are you typically a shy person or um you pretty out outspoken? Am I outspoken? Yeah. Well, no, you're you're like an introvert. You're kind of like me. You'd be like yeah, like I'm not. I'm not really a like if it's just me and you like in a room. Yeah. I'd be like eh, unless you're asking questions. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're asking the questions, I'll talk to you. But if yeah. I get to go out of my way to go, hey, um, those are nice shoes, man. What you know, where'd you get those shoes at? You know, <laughs> right, like, right, yeah. Like my yeah, wife's I'm not that great. At, yeah, my, my wife's great at like talking to strangers and like going, you know, Walmart and going, Oh, where'd you get those? That's a pretty purse, whatever. You know, like I'm like <laughs> where but in a crowd of like thousands of people to you know, millions of people like that, like that type of environment. I'm like the best at because I can care two shits about those guys. Like, as yeah. in like, like they don't know they like their opinions don't count as much as like if there's three people in the room and I'm like, I make eye contact and going, you suck. 
or <laughs> you're, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like it has more of an impact with three people versus thousands of people right. going, you suck. If people go in thousands of people, you suck. You're like, yeah, I'll feed up that. You suck. I suck. You, you know, right. or whatever. Oh, I'm awesome. You awesome. Like you can kind of feed yes. off that, but it's not a, you know, it's not just generally at you. Like it's like their opinion, like the opinion doesn't matter, but if there's three people in the room. You're like, that opinion counts. It, right. Even though it doesn't, it, but in the reality, you're like, oh, it sucked. Well, the next time that Machine Head comes to Las Vegas, I want to make sure to get you good and drunk and put you in your first mosh pit. Uh, I, I appreciate it. In a concert. At a concert. <laughs> at, at a, a concert. Park. That's right. Whenever those happen again, <laughs> probably a couple of years from now, but I'd love to get you in your first uh, mosh pit at a Machine Head show. That would be I'll, fucking I'll make awesome. sure I bring my mask. Yeah. <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen, Roy Big Country Nelson here on No Fucking Regrets. No fucking regrets. With Rob Flynn.